Hello everyone, I am Dr. Vicente Lorenzo Ocaban. I'm an ophthalmologist who recently completed training at the St. Luke's Medical Center Eye Institute, located in Quezon City, Philippines. On behalf of my co-authors, Dr. Uy, Dr. Yuki, and Dr. Satna, I'm here to present our video abstract for our research paper entitled Outcomes of Treatment with Serolimus for Non-Infectious Uveitis, a Meta-Analysis and Systematic Review. Uveitis is a group of intraocular inflammatory diseases. According to studies, it is the third leading cause of preventable blindness in the world due to its potentially blinding complications as cataract, glaucoma, and macular edema. Thus, greater efforts are needed for the development of site-saving treatments. Corticosteroids have always been the mainstay of treatment for most forms of uveitis and is recommended as the first line treatment for active disease. However, certain limitations arise in cases of refractory uveitis and patients who develop steroid related complications such as hypertension, diabetes, cataract, and IOP elevation. In such situations, other forms of immunosuppressive therapy is warranted. Serolimus is a recently studied and developed immunomodulator or IMT agent for treating many forms of non-infectious CVIs. Its primary action is to suppress T-cell proliferation by binding with the immunophilin FK12 binding protein, and therefore preventing it from activating the mammalian target, the rapamycin, or mTOR. Hence, we have a drug class called mTOR inhibitors, which also includes evorolimus. This may have a beneficial effect in the context of uveitis, as the immune dysfunction here is thought to be primarily T-cell mediated. We focus our attention on serolimus. Since more data is available, and we then conducted an extensive and systematic search as of November 2018 of electronic databases such as Embase, Medline, Cochrane Library. The primary outcome was uveitis activity as measured by Beatrice Hayes, while secondary outcomes included central macular thickness, IOP elevation, other BCVA, and other adverse events. A meta-analysis was then conducted on selected studies with appropriate clinical and methodological homogeneity. Seven studies were included and reviewed, and four were ultimately eligible for meta-analysis. The SAVE, Ibrahim Etlau, SAVE II, and Sakura trials. Three studies had a six-month follow-up, while one was extended to 12 months. For the results, the pooled proportions of inflammation control was 38% during a six-month follow-up, and this was increased to as much as 50% when 12-month follow-up data was included. For BCVA, uh, it was noted to be 62.2% improvement during a six-month follow-up and 56.86% during six to 12 months follow-up, with no significant difference between the two. IOP elevation remained at 7.11% for both six months and 12 months follow-up data. Uh, corticosteroid sparing effect of serums was also well demonstrated. A reduction in CMT was observed and only minor drug were noted in all studies. As, as ophthalmologists, we encounter patients with various eye problems and we do all we can to treat their condition and restore any limitations in their vision. Considering the, advan considering the advances in today's pharmacotherapeutics, lifelong eye diseases can now be treated with better outcomes. This review provides evidence that serum is a promising treatment option in controlling inflammatory activity improving visual acuity, sparing corticosteroid used with minor adverse events, patients with down infectious uveitis. However, data from ongoing and future larger scale clinical trials are still needed and for, to further strengthen the evidence we provide. For more information, we encourage you to read the full version of our review provided below. Thank you for your kind attention.